You know, you said you used the um, term, we voodooized the language, and you talked about how we as a culture and we as a people um, creative enough to take negative words and turn them positive. Right. Bad meaning, not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good, right? That's right. So I have, um, uh, uh, I, I recently taped a show all about the use of the N-word, right? Uh -huh. With a guest who, you know, um, really is an advocate for stopping the usage of it, right? And I have a, I have a, um, a fascination with how we've, as a culture, have taken that word and kind of flipped it and bounced it in all means. But there's a the conversation of should we bury it? Uh, is it is it is it keep it, our use of it keeping us keeping us down? Um, or is it okay for us to kind of take control of it and use it as we want? What's what's and the last poets definitely utilize. Right? <laughs> Overtime. <laughs> Overtime. Overtime. Okay. So, what's your thoughts on that? On our use of it. You know, I'm 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 very clear. Uh, a language is to be used when you give a word a value, and it only really gets a value when a, a multitude of people are using that word under the same basic premise. So the word develops value by, it's like everything else, it's supply and demand. Mm -hmm. So nigger was a word that was designed to make us feel less than human. And nigger actually, a lot of people don't realize, the original nigger was a mule. Because the mule is a hybrid. The mule is that animal created by putting a donkey with a horse. A lot of folks don't even realize that. The mule was created for the sole purpose of pulling the plow to help the black man plow the land to grow cotton mm -hmm. or any other crops. If the master said, I want two niggers in front of my barn at 6 a.m., one could be a black man and one could be a mule. But the reason why the black man got the name nigger to go along with the mule's nickname was because they both were the property of the master, and as far as he was concerned, he made them, he created both of them to do what he wanted them to do. Uh -huh. So he was in charge. You gotta realize, our slavery, which makes our slavery so much different than any slavery ever known to history, is the fact that every single thing we had was stripped from us. Uh -huh. And that is a deficit to begin with that no human being wants to be born into a world of zero. Right. I mean, but that's what happened with us. But that, but that also put us in a position to take nothing and become everything, mm. which is what makes me feel so, so good about being a part of this particular tribe, so mm -hmm. to speak. But the fact is that um, we're dealing with this word, and the word was definitely designed to hurt us and make us feel less than, and was used very negatively. But it had no other more negative, I mean, if if people started digesting some of the everyday usages of some words that we've been, that we've agreed that were positive and found that their origins have nothing but negative origins, it may change our concepts about the use of those words as well. But the truth of the matter is that what we've done is We've, in our need to survive and to live and to live the way we want to, we've had to redefine the language to suit ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've had to do something, because this language is a bastard language to begin with. We wanted to be able to communicate that we would get some kind of satisfaction and fulfillment. So, and then we have to also recognize black people are not tone deaf. We speak with different tones. We can say the same word in about four different ways. And you know, each way we say it, we mean something different. Right. But it's the same word. If somebody says, get that nigga away from me, we know in the tone that this is not a favorable person to you. Right. <laughs> right. And, it's and, not that hard to figure out. You got that, the, the way it's said. And if I'm watching a game and my man comes down and does a, 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 a 360 slam dunk, I said, that's a bad nigga. Mm -hmm. You that's know a that. Double negative right there. <laughs> 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 so, 
or double positive. Well, like how you want to do it. <laughs> but the fact is that that's to what degree we've had to go to express what we feel. Right. Because the language doesn't do that. So we've had to alter things to suit ourselves. But we can do that primarily because of the intent behind it. Okay. The tone. This is not just, what are words? Sounds that we've agreed upon. Right. Bottom line. That's all it is. It's a sound. And we agreed that I just said pussy. Mm -hmm. why, did that, why did I say pussy? I heard you. I know that word. What, what do you know about the word? Pussy's pussy. Mm -hmm. But that's not nice. <laughs> and so you ask him. <laughs> Please. It's just a sound. But we've given a definition. Right. And we've all agreed upon it. Right. You know? Uh, so it's just funny to me. But because I'm a poet, I study all these things because I love jazz. And I recognize that as much of a poet as I try to be, with a pen and paper and words. I'll never be the poet John Coltrane was or Miles Davis was because those guys were poets in sound. Mm -hmm. Pure sound. They didn't, in pure sound, where they gave you in their sound through the instrument enough for you to imagine yourself being in Shangri-La if you wanted to be. Okay. They were, were they were outside of any box, any outside, of, <laughs> and took instruments that you think automatically would box you in. Mm -hmm. If any of us took a music class in school, we know how how, rigid, how rigorous and and anal it was to learn the notes and learn the claps to learn this and right. it ain't no juice in that. Mm -hmm. But these guys said, you know what? Forget all that. We got no paper in front of us. We're going for it. So jazz is born. Bebop was born. Bebop is another tier of jazz, just like hip hop is another tier of poetry. Right. And 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 so, you know, we we keep graduating, and 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 that's the other thing with that word nigga as well. Just like we graduate as a people of our creative talents and skills and our art divisions, the word nigga has gone through series of evolutionary changes. In the beginning, it was probably one of the most wicked things you can relate to call a black man mm -hmm. because of the circumstances that, but that we were under. You say, I don't know why Aunt, Aunt Mary is marrying that nigga. Oh my God, why would she do that? We ain't seen him, he ain't been in the film. But she just gave us enough information to think that this is the most despicable human being <laughs> on God's planet. Right. And anybody that looks unsavory, we're going to give that to that character called nigger. Mm. And that was, became a kind of real situation to the point where that word nigger don't smell right. Right. <laughs> right. And so um, it didn't, we grew out of that because, well, the last poets, we said, now the nigga not only don't smell it, but the nigga is also, he doesn't work within the confines of the family, of the group. Mm -hmm. He thinks individually. Okay. We need unity right now. Black folks in a situation where all hands on deck. Right. Everybody gotta be down. This is, we gotta have a revolution. Mm -hmm. We need your participation. Man, that with Charles revolution. You see, my El Dorado, don't be sitting on it, I'll shoot you. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And get out of my way. I gotta get to my ride. So we said, niggas ain't, ain't we don't need niggas. Because mm -hmm. you a bad nigga, you wanna be another kind of nigga, street nigga, slick nigga. I don't wanna pay attention to nigga. I don't, I, I don't wanna be the kind of nigga you want me to be. I wanna be my own nigga. I wanna really be a nigga. Like, like our boy recently, uh, Floyd Money Making Mayweather mm -hmm. says, uh, somebody said, don't shop at, uh, what's it? Uh, Gucci. Fu Fu uh, Fuji? Gucci. 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 Mm -hmm. Don't shop at Gucci. Don't shop at Gucci. They are clowning black people with one of their designs and using blackface and all kinds of stuff. 
And my father said, man, I shot where I want to shot. I ain't paying attention to them niggas. <laughs> man, I shot letting everybody know I'm the biggest nigga you'll see right now besides Donald Trump. There are certain, and that's, see, that's the other thing. So that term now has become even something of a grandiose, I'm looking out for self-attitude. Okay. And so the nigga represents a certain kind of a, uh, um, I'm not willing to work together with the crew. Okay. But hip hop kind of took it another level and made nigga a super rebel. Okay. Where not only is he not willing to work, he ain't following the rules, and he's gonna be dangerous. Yeah. And he's not gonna be, he ain't gonna be no punk. Right. And he's gonna be strong. So the definition, the nigga, the word nigga itself has evolved. Once again, it's a sound. I, you know what, one of the things I hate, Cortland, is I go someplace and I'm talking about maybe the history of the last poets, we got a bunch of nigga poems. I mentioned nigga maybe about four, five, maybe six or seven times. I have some sisters say, I sure wish you wouldn't say that word. It's just, it just irritates me. Just, it, I just like little things crawling on my back when you say that word. I just, if you could just say the N word. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What are you talking about? It's language, lady. You're gonna let language crawl up your back and mm. eat you like a lobster? What's up with you? I mean, we have got to recognize we black people are masters of sound. We, we are the only people on this planet who could take up a, a bit, create something like scatting. Right. That's. They took the musical instruments out of the high schools, stopped black folks from playing musical instruments because we were getting jiggy with that stuff. We were getting great. All kind of little jazz bands and things were popping up. And they could see the power that we were gaining from being musical. Right. Took that stuff out to school. The kids became human beatboxes. <laughs> Point blank period. The body, the body itself is a whole damn symphony. And some cats could do stuff with their mouths, have about six or seven different sounds come out their mouth. You say, where did that come from? You take this away, I'll show you how I can, how I can, um, I can, so I can substitute that. Right. I, I shall not die. We're not about death. Our whole existence of, our whole lives are so serious until even if we would try to kill ourselves, we're not going to die. And we've been doing that very well, <laughs> many of us. Trying, right? Many of us, on a whole bunch of levels. But we're still here, and we're still strong. And for the most part, we're still beautiful. And it's my job as a poet, I feel. And if I was a rapper, I'd say the same thing. If I'm gonna have your ears, and I'm gonna say a bunch of words, it's my job, my inherent job, to try to pick you up make you feel good about yourself, and do something good for others. How do you feel about people who aren't black using the word? There's a song out right now by a black rapper called Let the White Kid Say Nigger. You know what? Right. Let me say this. Every group of people have a nigger inside them. Since nigger has become a character, and black folks have put them on blast by our so-called nigger behavior, as people want to call it, mm -hmm. And then people have this need to want to be like us for some reason, but yet they don't want to deal with the, they want to deal with the watermelon part, but they don't want to deal with the rind part. Right. And the real deal is that um, in order to be us, you got to deal with the whole thing. Okay. The fact is that, uh, but everybody, and I've discovered this in my travels, everybody has just become infatuated with the term nigger. Oh yeah. And they want to be a nigger, and the truth is, Everybody does have a nigger. That concern you consider that the nigger is now that rebellious spirit, that rebel without a cause. Every group of people, every culture has that. Mm -hmm. And that character is getting some play when you get into hip hop because it's all about that attitude. I'm not gonna be the best son to go get my father, Father's Day present. 
I'm not doing none of that bullshit. <laughs> you know, I'm myself. I'm my, I got my own. I got this. I mean, it's all about me self-aggrandizing myself and me blowing me up and saying, fuck you and everything else because it's about me. Hmm. And basically that attitude persists in every single culture. So the character nigga is bona fide throughout the entire world. And other people, I, I, to my, listen, to my amazement, I've heard conversations in Rome, matter of fact, there's one place where I couldn't sleep. I was downstairs, like at two in the morning, there were about four boys right there near the corner of the hotel I was in. I said, yo, nigga, why you do that, man? Come on, nigga, what you say? Come on, man, nigga. I, I said, I know I'm awake. <laughs> but it blew my mind because there was just too many niggas there and I didn't see no black people and right. everybody was a nigga this. Right. And they were saying it so naturally. Mm. Like that's really what they they have bought into the. We learned from, but you know what? The white folks, really, uh, they're, they're very studious. We set a certain bar. We create a certain sound, a certain jarring or something. We give you a blueprint, and Lord knows you can take that bad boy and claim it, right? And make it yours. So there are quite a few folks of many nationalities that are presently using the word nigger like it's okay just because they have been raised on hip hop. Right. <laughs> right. A quick story, because I still have a problem with those who don't claim black or haven't had our experience uh, taking the word and, and enjoying the value, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Right? Well, Cashing it in. But you know what? I think when they use that word, it is so obvious until it makes them look bad. <laughs> okay, so it's like I think that we should just like you ain't, you ain't you don't ain't, even think you about ain't it. No real, right? Because <laughs> anybody in their right mind knows you ain't got the points. You ain't <laughs> <laughs> point blank period, right? You ain't you, uh, please. I mean, this is really. So I shouldn't get all bent out of shape over over it. When not that, a bit. Let me tell you when um and and and. I, I, I'm not going to cut you off again, but I got to tell you this. No, story. it's all right. Um, in the studio, I was recording a, um, uh, I think it was like Half White, Half Asian, right? Uh -huh. um, so he's using, been a client of mine, but the first time that I heard him use, you know, nigga in, in the booth. Mm -hmm. So I pulled him out and I was like, <laughs> you know. What you doing? Right, what you doing, right? He was like. You ain't got you your privilege to do Right, I said, you see him? And so you know, you know, he went in explaining this, that, and the third, and his 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 white homie was there, and I said, okay, we live right across the street from the projects, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. We can you gonna you, you we can go right down here. We are gonna see how comfortable you are with the work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we front a little bit. His his well, his, his homie was like like, nah, you know you ain't gonna do that, right? Mm -hmm. But I told him, I said, I have a nigga program for you, right? <laughs> I said it's a six month program. You come every Sunday, spend three hours. We're going to study all these books and everything about black history and African history for mm -hmm. six months. But every third Sunday, you got to take 20 lashes to the back. Woo! Right? And Woo. so by the time those six months are up and you've got 200 some odd lashes or more, which is light work, comparatively speaking, right? Then you can, you can get you, your card. You get right? your nigga card. Right. The next white boy you hear saying, nigga, you're going to knock him out. <laughs> you're going to say, you ain't went through what I went through to be able to utilize that term. That, you well, know, that, no, but your your point is very well taken, because that but that's that's actually putting some real value in nigger beyond. And I'm saying the nigger is still nobody we can really build a nation for. Hmm. The nigger is a character that can be utilized okay. under different circumstances because. Right now, he is definitely rebellious, and he's definitely committed to that rebellion. And those things can be motivated or manipulated to some extent. We can utilize that attitude, but we're not building a nation for that. We mm -hmm. really want a nation for black people okay. who respect and appreciate their Africanness, are willing to really put integrity before everything else and really be straight up with each other 
We can't have no deceitful motherfuckers, no liars, nobody that we can't trust. Because I'm talking about a world we ain't got to worry about no fucking locks and keys. That world can exist. Because we got black folks like that. I know that. And that, that has to, that, and we got to go full steam. And anybody with nigga behavior, and that means that, you know, you might be a thief, you might have some problems, you don't know how to keep your hands off for other people's shit. You might have a little sex Jones. Every time you see some fat ass, you got to touch it. You know, you got to employ some discipline. And a lot of niggas don't do that. And that's unfortunate. I respect the rebellious piece, but there's the thing about a nigga is so like a, a little itch in my soul. Okay. And that's primarily because it's not, there's not much discipline employed with the concept of being a nigga. And I don't care who you are. Okay. Chinese nigga, Italian nigga, Greek nigga, don't matter. Discipline is required. Niggas and discipline are like oil and water, I believe. Doesn't mix. I don't believe that they mix. Mm. In order to be, and see, yet the nigga has value. Because a nigga can, is so rebellious, and sometimes people don't understand you being gentle and kind. Sometimes you gotta be a nigga and just show your butt and to get some things done. It's not a happy feeling necessarily, but it can be, it can open up a door where it was shut, possibly. Okay. If used in the proper way. So that's why I said CYN, you know, control your nigga. Right, which is one of my favorite pieces, mm -hmm. right? Control your nigga. Because <laughs> it really kind of helps to reconcile. Yes, you know and that, that and that and that's also so, requires some discipline. Right. You can't run around being a nigga all day. Mm -hmm. That's not controlling the nigga. I mean, everybody see you come out oh, here, come that nigga. No. <laughs> no. No. So control your nigga. Control your nigga. Very important. It requires a little discipline, but it means you're not gonna show your secret weapon all the time. Be Clark Kent sometimes. Be Superman <laughs> just once in a while. Understood. That's a Jew right there. Public service announcement. Yes. All right. <laughs>